Hi, I'm Bob Bronco, past president of the San Juan Piles Association. And we're sitting in front of a uh, gypsy uh, moth, 1951 uh, de Havilland gypsy moth. And uh, we're in the hangar of Dr. Guymans. And our guest today is Bill Hera, who's also a San Juan resident. And Bill's kind enough today to sit down and chat with us a little bit about some of his flying experiences and uh, some of the experience he had in World War II. Thanks for joining us today, Bill. Glad to. Wonderful day out there, isn't it? Yes. You know, being at an airport, we're probably going to have a couple planes go by taking off, making noise. So uh, if they're making a lot of noise, we'll just stop, let them go by and wave to them or something like that. Well, Bill, let's start by where you got started. Uh, I understand you just celebrated your 91st birthday? 90th. 90th, okay. Uh -huh. And uh, where did you primarily grow up at? I was born in Seattle and uh, lived my whole life there, except for uh, the Navy time in World War II. Well, Seattle and Mercer Island, but mm -hmm. it's just a suburb of Seattle. Which high, which high school did you go to? Garfield. Okay. Well, I graduated in 42. Okay. So it was 38 to 42. Uh, and uh, I was going to go on to uh, UW from there, but in as much as the war had started, and I knew I was going to be in it. Uh, my dad uh, wanted me to work at his store and while I was waiting to be called up. And mm -hmm. uh, then in spring of, of uh, 43, uh, I started uh, with the, uh, then he called me up and it was the civil CPT training, mm -hmm. civil patrol, I forget. But anyway, it was in Pocus Hill, Idaho. Oh, yeah. Uh, I was there for two months uh, flying uh, the Piper. Yeah. 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 I mean, okay. Yeah. <laughs> no problem. I'm sorry. My no dad problem. was in CPT as well, and he also flew those. That's kind of <laughs> Yeah. It was, uh, I was sick. Uh, I get sick every time I flew and, and uh, threw up in the cockpit. And boy, I thought, this is, <laughs> I'm going to be out on my tail in a hurry. But I finally got through the uh, the pain, or not the pain, but the agony mm -hmm. of uh, stomach the issues. Yeah, and this was in Pocatello. Yes. Huh. Had you done any flying prior to the Navy as a civilian at all? Just one hop at the San Francisco Fair. Uh huh. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So after Pocatello and the J-3, uh, what was the next step? Next step was uh, uh, St. Mary's, California, for, for, for pre-flight. Mm -hmm. And that was three to four months of just athletics half a day and ground school half a day. And you had no fun at all. No, I'm trying to think St. Mary's. What part of California is that? Northern or Southern? Uh, it's above Oakland. It was okay. called the Oakland Hills. And was there an airfield there? No, oh. no, no. This was a school, St. Mary's College. Oh, okay. They took over the whole thing. Huh. All the dormitories were, uh, and they made the sports uh, uh, program there. and. Uh, it was a full bore course. Hmm. And were they teaching anything in aviation there, or was all? No, huh? no, just plain uh, uh, college curriculum. Yes. Uh huh. When did you get additional flight training to go to serve the country? From St. Mary's, the train. Well, it doesn't matter. We took a train to. Uh, Norman, Oklahoma, where there was a primary field, uh, Navy mm -hmm. primary field, where we flew this chairman mm -hmm. uh, day in and day out, and 
hot and cold. I was mm -hmm. there from, uh, well, I remember it was football season, and we got to see a game of Norman, Oklahoma's world. Uh, yeah, big Oklahoma football team. Yeah, yeah. And uh, that was a big thing. We stayed there through the snow and ice of winter. I remember uh, you're supposed to do one flight uh, or night flight, and it was a cold. Hmm. But we'd been issued fleece, fleece leather, mm -hmm. beautiful. Yeah. And you climbed out there and climbed into the cockpit, of course, open cockpit, yeah. and uh, flew in the Flew like we're supposed to, but uh, and this was a steerman. Yeah, mm -hmm. I bet it was cold there. Oh, oh. I remember that cold. Huh. What happened? Where did you go after uh, Norman, Oklahoma? Norman, Oklahoma to Corpus Christi, Texas. Okay. Where we flew the uh, SNJ, the North American sure. Uh, sure. plane, and. Uh, that was for a long period. Uh, what did I say? We were there, and it was in the uh, spring to the middle of summer, doing all the uh, navigation, especially, and uh, uh, shooting mm -hmm. uh, out in the Gulf. and. Uh, uh, just the whole program of learning how to fly. So you were flying uh, SNJs? Yes. And uh, were you learning to do bombing with those? A little bit uh -huh. of bombing out uh -huh. in the uh, Gulf. Off the uh, uh -huh. in the water. <laughs> yeah, sure. And uh, then uh, did you end up going overseas after that? No, no. Then, then I went to uh, Melbourne, Florida. Mm -hmm. and that's where I got in the F-6. Okay. And we flew there for three to uh, four months. And uh, it was thorough. It was a lot of field carrier landing and uh, gunnery. Mm -hmm. And uh, got through there. The, it was in the uh, November. From there to uh, Chicago to uh, go out in Lake Michigan mm -hmm. and uh, land on a little oh yeah play carrier that they made out of a freighter. Yeah, I've seen pictures of that. Yeah, and that was the first carrier to train on that was ever built was in Lake Michigan. And it was snowing, it was cold. Here I've been in Florida and Texas <laughs> the whole year. And I got out there and made the uh, approach and landed. And this officer jumped up and just chewed me out something fierce. I had forgotten to change the pitch, uh -huh. and but he, uh, I went around the normal six or eight times and uh -huh. got an okay. And uh -huh. Now, did they have a resting gear on that? Did you have a tail hook? No. So you're just using brakes? Yeah. Wow. I've seen pictures of that uh, carrier, and it's pretty scary. <laughs> yeah, and a snowstorm is scarier. Did many guys wash out there? I I don't think they tried to wash out there. Uh -huh. It was in uh, Texas and uh, advanced. Uh, they kind of wanted the top guys. Yeah, yeah. From Chicago, we got a week off. We all flew our, to home for a week. And then met in uh, San Diego after that week. 
and there was no openings to go out to sea or anything like that. Yeah. So they gave us a plane, and uh, we were in a group of five. They formed this idea of uh, four cadets and one that had a tour of duty. Mm -hmm. So uh, that was the way we we handled it, uh, and uh, the next field we or the after leaving San Diego we went to. Uh, Lovely little spot called, uh, oh boy, it's north of, the, just north of the Salton Sea below Palm Springs. Okay. It was a, an army uh, field that they were built by the army and they didn't feel much <laughs> uh -huh. like keeping it and they let the Navy have it. Uh -huh. And, uh, we just flew every day, uh, scattering uh, bullets throughout the desert. <laughs> uh, you couldn't hit a person if you tried. And you're still flying an SNJ? No, no, we're F-6s. Oh, F-6s, yeah. okay. Uh, but along comes uh, New Year's, and we thought, holy mackerel, we've got We've got to take off and do a little, have a little fun. So we, I forget whether we hitchhiked or walked. It's a terrible amount of miles, but I know we walked home because uh, there is no, there was no traffic whatsoever, mm -hmm. uh, and we certainly didn't have a car. But uh, so we over. I had so much fun in, in Palm Springs that uh, we forgot to go back to base for <laughs> a day or two. <laughs> so we spent the rest of the month on the, the uh, uh, what was the terminology? Uh, KP or restricted? Uh, restricted to base. To base. Uh -huh. And. Uh, so that, that was the end of January. We went back to uh, North Island, San Diego, mm -hmm. and awaited transportation to uh, Pearl. Mm -hmm. And we waited and waited and waited. And uh, the months went by, and mm -hmm. you can't imagine the frustration. We finally got on a carrier that was going to Pearl. At the Pearl, there was still no opening to get in the fleet, but we uh, kept flying uh, most every day and extra little training, like going out, uh, taking you out in the ocean and let you sit in a little rubber uh, life raft and <laughs> see how you feel after. <laughs> an hour of bouncing around, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but finally, we got uh, a carrier came in and needed the four of us, the five of us, and we we got on the Hancock at that time, and on the way to join the fleet, uh, uh, we stopped and. Wake Island, and they gave us new guys a uh, chance to go get shot at and shoot them. But the interesting part of that was they 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 still had artillery. I mean, they were shooting at us, but off off on a very um, far from getting shot at from land was a PBY mm -hmm. circling to pick one of us up if we got shot. Oh, down. yeah, yeah. What a war. What, uh, what area were you, were you bombing uh, part of Japan then, or, or what were you trying to hit? Oh, that's after we, see, we were just Wake Island right. doing that. Right. Then we joined the whole fleet at Lady Gulf. 
You never saw so many warships in all your life. Uh -huh. And that's when the uh, extended uh, coverage to just flatten Japan, to soften it up mm -hmm. as far as we could. And we took off and had little sectors. We ended up in the north sector. Uh, just north of Tokyo Bay, mm -hmm. and uh, mostly uh, targets of opportunity uh, fly down the coast. If we see a coastal liner, or uh, uh, just uh, once there was a, a train going up the coast, and I was flying tail end Charlie of, a, of a three mm. divisions, that'd be 12 planes, and uh, I peeled off, I said, I'm going to get him, the, the train, and the skipper said, okay, and I went as fast as I could, but I, he went into a tunnel mm. before I could get him, huh. so that ruined that part of the <laughs> game. But uh, Now, were you flying direct from uh, Wake to Japan, or were you flying off a carrier? Oh, no, we were on a carrier the okay. whole time. Yeah. Um, the, our carrier was off when we just the one day we hit wake. Okay. And then we, of course, landed back in the carrier. Which, which carrier were you flying off of? The Hancock. Okay. And how far off of Japan were you then? <coughs> With the Hancock? Oh, heavens, we're at Wake Island. It's okay. a thousand miles. But I mean, were you on the Hancock launching to Japan? Or were you launching from Wake to Japan? No, no, we were on the Hancock from Pearl. Right. And Hancock took us to, uh, just to stop at, at Wake and uh, uh, let us have that one day of... Uh, okay. Then you continued on the Hancock. All right. And yeah. when, they, when you went after Japan, how cl close did the Hancock get to Japan? Well, uh, like I say, we all met at Lady Gulf. Okay. And we, we all went up, and uh, it was, um, we had uh, the Admiral Halsey in our group, and he wanted so bad to really, he wanted to get Japan himself, and he mm -hmm. took his flagship, Flag battleship mm -hmm. in close, and he shot mm -hmm. Japan from his battleship. Yeah, we down. Well, that's a side story, but we were all just staying off of, of uh, Oahu. Uh, no, Oahu. Wake? Okay. No. Uh, Liddy? No. <laughs> Japan itself, uh -huh. uh, what was that northern island? Honshu. Honshu, yeah. Uh, and uh, just day after day, well, of course, we take a time out and resupply uh, fuel. And, and there was another fun little experience that I had. Uh, we needed to uh, uh, get another Hellcat. I forget why, but uh, they said we needed a, another plane. So there was a supply of uh, on a um, jeep carrier that was in the group, and uh, so I got on a what do they call them a, a buoy? Uh, you mean when they go from ship to ship? You ship to ship. Yeah. I, uh, I know what we're talking about. Right. <laughs> and uh, so that was an experience. It's I like a bosun's chair that goes between. Yeah. Yeah. And of course the ships come up and uh, come like that, and you're going down. And <laughs> But I made it to the, to the destroyer, but that's another story. A destroyer goes like a... Uh, it waddles around in the sea. 
and I'm used to riding in a great carrier. Mm -hmm. And boy, I'm starting to feel sick again. And <clears throat> I uh, went, I stood in the, the breeze, I didn't want to go in the cabin, stood in the breeze and by the rail, if I had to, <laughs> uh, but I, I made it all right. <laughs> Then another Breach's Boy getting on. Breach's Boy, that's the name of it. Yeah. yeah. Onto the uh, Jeep carrier, picked up a new plane, and off we go. Uh, and uh, back to the Hancock. Did you end up flying the Hellcat at all? Or Pardon? Did you fly the Hellcat? All the time. Oh, you didn't? Okay. The whole time. The Hellcat, okay. Yeah. And the Hellcat was an F6. Right. Yeah, okay. And now, was that both uh, bombing capable as well as fighting capable? We carried, uh, besides the 50 caliber machine guns, the uh, a rack of uh, uh, six rockets, and uh, sometimes a, uh, a, a bomb mm -hmm. in the center. So we were... Uh, we could do a lot of damage, but boy, uh, we checked fields, of course, flying fields, and strafed them, but there was no, they had no gasoline, mm -hmm. and uh, you couldn't set them on fire. Uh, it was uh, kind of frugal, fruitful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Fruitless. Fruitless, yeah. Fruitless. Did you do any uh, work in southern Japan or was it all in Tokyo and north? All Tokyo and north. Okay. And uh, even as high as Hokkaido, and mm -hmm. they have a little snow in Hokkaido. Right. Uh, even, even in the summer. Yeah. Well, no, it was getting fall. But, so, uh, so when you went in with the F-6, were you generally doing strafing runs? Right. Uh, how would you use the rockets? Well, I did it, uh, we, uh, we ran across a, t um, uh, a town or city that had a big gas storage uh, tank, and I thought, boy, I'm going to explode that tank with a rocket. And uh, I, <clears throat> as I remember, I hit it, but it was, it had no gas in it. <laughs> Nothing happened. <laughs> it probably would have exploded in my face. But, uh, did, just, you, did you see any uh, Japanese aircraft uh, challenge you or come up in the sky against you? Never. Uh, never the whole, never the whole time did uh, a fine, uh, Japanese plane. Yeah. Although uh, uh, we get uh, reports of uh, planes, and the uh, the ship was always on the alert. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, none came close to us. Okay. Good. So. Uh, I heard that maybe you dropped some leaflets over there later in the war. Can you tell us about that? <laughs> well, after the after the uh, uh, the war was over, uh, we were sent uh, to uh, find. Uh, trying to say, uh, camps. Mm -hmm. uh, POW camps. POW camps. And I thought, well, I'll just put a little personal touch on it. And I wrote uh, notes saying who I was and where I was from. and <laughs> Keep calm, help is coming. And slip this into the you know, half a dozen packages of cigarettes. And we found one, and I, uh, 
I really went too extreme. I went too low, but I wanted to get them in the compound. Mm -hmm. uh, so if they got the cigarettes and the note, and they did get them. And when I came out of the, uh, looked ahead after doing that, here was this great big hill <laughs> facing me. And boy, I po put on the power. I thought, this, I'm not going to end the war this way. <laughs> Crashing in a POW camp. <laughs> and I made it out, uh, but uh, that was a that was a uh, leads up to a fantastic story. I I got over forty letters from POW after they got home. Mm -hmm. They answered. Because I left my personal, my uh, home address on that. Uh, huh. So that was that was pretty that nice. That was the war. Have you kept the uh, letters? No, I I started school immediately. I didn't. I got out of the war in uh, November one, and the school had already started. So I, and I enrolled right away, and I kept looking at those letters, letters and I'm saying, I've got to answer them. And then I had this schoolwork to do, and I'm ashamed to say that I never answered them. Yeah, okay. Now, uh, when did you come back stateside? That was October, the, the, the ship, the Hancock, Went down to Okinawa and picked up a whole bunch of Marines uh, uh, and brought them. And then we headed straight for uh, uh, Long Beach. Or what's it? Just north of Long Beach is the harbor of LA Harbor. Uh -huh. uh, and uh, so we got. We, end, we uh, arrived there in uh, pretty close to the end of uh, October, and we took the we ferried the planes. They took the planes off by uh, uh, Derek or uh, Crane, and uh, we flew them to San Diego. Uh, San Diego. Said goodbye, told us to go home. Uh, and what year would that be? That was 45. Okay. Uh, so I flew home and uh, there was a, a final dis, uh, dismemberment <laughs> uh, was. Uh, was there in downtown Seattle, and so I. Oh yeah. So you got discharged. I uh, yes. yeah. Yeah. Well, not discharged, but put on reserve. Okay. And Did you do any uh, personal flying after the war? No, but I joined the reserve at Navy Seattle. At Sandpoint. At, at Sandpoint, and I stayed in for a total of twenty-six years. Oh wow. Uh, in that time, uh, I went from an ensign, if you can believe it, a commander. No. No. Were you doing any flying at Sandpoint? Every once a month, one weekend a month. And what, flying. what aircraft were you flying there? Anything they gave us. Huh. We had Hellcats, we had Bearcats. They gave the Bearcats to the French to lose in, in uh, Vietnam. Uh, we had uh, Sky Raiders, hmm. the bombers. Uh, Have you flown the Sky Raider? Not before. Uh, we flew uh, 
the uh, <coughs> the other fighter, uh, Corsair. Mm -hmm. We had Corsair for a long time. Uh, it was just uh, uh, well, the Sky Raider. Let that guy go by here. We had one Sky Raider that was the uh, Dash 5. And the difference between the Dash 5 and the 4 and the 6 was that the dive brake came down from the fuselage rather than from the Wings. side. I took this baby up and I said, well, I've got to play with, see how it feels. So I go into a dive mm -hmm. with a dive breakdown. And would you know, the dive break would not retract. Oh boy. <laughs> I sweated and I did everything I could. And of course, I'd never flown it before. I didn't know the cockpit that well. <laughs> Search for anything that looked like it would help. Nothing. So I had to call. And we were operating out of this beautiful new Navy field in uh, San Diego. It was quite a way north of town. Mm -hmm. uh, it was uh, uh, oh, it's had a huge runway for yeah. all the jets and uh, I radioed and said I'm uh, coming in with a, a dive breakdown and uh, they told me to circle for a while and they <laughs> thought about it and uh, tried to get uh, expert help on uh, somebody who knew that airplane but uh, nothing uh, so I got the okay to come in, and of course they brought out all the fire engines and crash trucks. And of course I had this huge runway, to, so I just floated in and uh, wore down the, the dive brake as I mm -hmm. rolled out, mm -hmm. leaving, of course, that, uh, close the field mm -hmm. for the jets because uh -huh. I left all this... Stuff on the field. <laughs> aluminum. Scrap. <laughs> but, uh, well, that was just a little aside of a weekend warrior. Yeah. <laughs> what year did you retire from the guard or from the reserve? Uh, or about, let's see. 27 years, so it'd be 40. 64 or something. Oh boy. Well, that's okay. I don't know. Well, uh, we sure appreciate talking today. My understanding is you later had a career at Radar Electric in Seattle? Yes. And what, what did you do at Radar? I was just a salesperson. Okay. Uh, uh, just serving the uh, people who needed electronic parts yeah, and electric. Yeah. I know uh, radar well, so. Yes. <laughs> oh, you and, do? Oh, yeah. Oh. Yeah, I've been a customer there many years. So what brought you to San Juan Island? We had purchased, uh, wife and I and two kids, purchased a 21-foot uh, 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 bellboy, mm -hmm. which uh, slept four. Two kids in the v box and... Uh, the wife and I in the in the uh, chair, this chairs that folded made down, a, yeah. Uh, and we we sailed. I mean, took it out and went to the San Juans and oh, in South Sound, we mm -hmm. covered the Sound uh, every day we could. I mean, just weekends and, sure. and vacation and. Uh, we got to the San Juans, and boy, we thought this was great. And uh, 
finally ended up there in the in uh, Fish Creek and uh, found a lot there and and bought a lot on the water and uh, had our runabout uh, and we built a house and uh, wife and I retired there. Yeah. Well, very good. Well, Bill, we sure enjoyed uh, getting together today and having a chance to chat and learn a bit about your history and uh, also for your service to the country. So thank you very much. Thank you for having me. And that's it for today from uh, San Juan Island.